this After Effects tutorial will animate some abstract shapes. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel. We'll use a few different animation techniques to make it easy. So let's dive right in. First of all, we add a new comp, HD resolution, and we probably should name it. By the way, check out the free project file, link is in the description. We grab the pen tool and draw a straight vertical line. Add the first point, then hold shift while adding the second point. That's it. Stroke color white, stroke width 2 pixels. We use, nope, the alignment tool to align the line vertically. And let's name the line as well, line, to appease all motion design gods. Next, with no layer selected, we choose the ellipse tool, double click on it, then open the ellipse path property and set the size to 500 by 500 pixels. Let's name this layer shape right. No stroke and any fill color is all right. Next, we move the anchor point 250 pixels to the left, which moves the shape to the right. Then we use the effects and presets window to add a gradient ramp. We turn the ramp shape into a radial ramp. Then we open the effects and transform properties and link the start of ramp to the position, which moves it to where the anchor point is. The end of ramp as well, which isn't really cool, because it's the exact same position. So we open the expression field and add 500 pixels, plus 500, which offsets it 500 pixels to the right. If you would want to change the Y value as well, you would add an array. Screw up brackets, then the X value, comma, the Y value. You can see the actual value here. Expressions are snippets of code in JavaScript that allow you to create animations that would be impossible to design manually. In this Domestica course, Desmond teaches you how to code expressions to create complex animation rigs. Learn to use a variety of techniques to make a series of abstract geometric animations. Get familiar with the basics of coding expressions and learn about procedural design and work on complex animations based on mathematical equations. I've added the link to this course and all animation courses to the description. And even better, use the code manualdesmotion 10 to get 10% off. Alright, let's quickly animate the shape. We add a position keyframe at 10 frames. At the beginning, we move it to the right, out of the screen. Hold shift to move it in a straight line. At 12 frames, we move it 40 frames to the right. At 14 frames, we move it back. At 15 frames, we move it 5 frames to the right. At 16 frames, it's back touching the line. The line here left of the shape means the motion paths are busy paths, which we don't want, so we select all keyframes, right click on them, go to keyframe interpolation and set everything to linear. And the line is gone. Although one thing we do is, we open the graph editor to adjust the speed graph. We slow down the beginning and speed the end of this part up as much as possible. So the shape hits the line full speed. Awesome! The left shape, we duplicate the right shape. Let's rename it, cause we should. Then we go to layer, transform and click flip horizontal. Which is awesome, all we have to do now is adjust the positions. At the beginning, we move it all the way to the left. Then, at 12 frames, we move it 80 pixels to the left. 40 to the center, and then 40 more. And at 15 frames, 10 pixels to the left. Like 5 pixels back to the middle, then 5 more pixels to the left. Then, we offset the layer by 2 frames. Let's check it out. Not too bad, right? Next, we want the left shape to move right and disappear. We set a position keyframe at 1 second. 5 frames later, we move the shape to the right, on top of the right shape. I think it's x 1460 pixels. What we actually want is for the shape to disappear behind the line. So we choose the rectangle tool and double click on it. With no layer selected, of course, we want to create a new shape layer. No stroke, any kind of fill, let's name it mask. Let's move it to x. 1920 pixels, so that the left edge is on the line. Then we add a set matte effect to the left shape. Take the matte from the mask we just created. <laughs> Let's maybe hide the mask. And we need to invert it. Awesome. Finally, let's adjust the speed curve again. 
we speed up the end as much as possible, so that it like seems to get sucked in. Then let's add the small shape. With no layer selected, we double click on the ellipse tool again. And in the ellipse path property, we change the size to 100 by 100 pixels. Stroke white, width 1 pixel. Fill black. And let's name it shape small. Alright, it appears at 1 second and 3 frames. That's why we move the start point. Then we add a set matte effect to the small shape and take the matte from the right shape. Okay, we set a position keyframe at 1 second and 3 frames. Then at 1 second and 7 frames, the shape has moved to the opposite side. That's x 1410 pixels. We want the gradient ramp to follow the small shape now, as soon as it is completely inside the shape, which is at 1 second and 4 frames. So we split the layer there, open the position property. <laughs> Let's clean up and close all the other stuff. And open the gradient ramp settings. Off shape right. Then, like before, we link the start and end of the gradient ramp to the position. Off the small shape. Add 500 pixels again to the end position. Awesome! Now we want the small shape to roll along the lower half of the big shape. How do we do that? We use the shape path of the right shape. Let's duplicate the layer and then we open the ellipse path property. Right click on it and convert it into a BC path. Then we select the path, go to window and open the create nulls from path script. We choose trace path, which creates a null object that traces the path. Let's hide the shape layer. Then we open the trace path property in the null object. And first of all, delete the expression and the two progress keyframes. Then at 1 second and 7 frames, we split the layer of small shape 2. Then we set progress to around 25% to match the position of the shape. Then link shape small 3 to it. Don't forget to add a keyframe. At 2 seconds, it is around 65% maybe. 20 frames later, at around 30%. 15 frames later, at 55%. So pretty easy. All we need to do is adjust the speed curve. Slow down all beginnings and ends. Awesome, but you probably are wondering why the gradient doesn't move along anymore. It is because the layer is linked to the null object. So we need to split the layer of the right shape at 1 second and 7 frames. And link the start and end to the null position. But this time we need to subtract 50 pixels to center it. As the anchor point is on the right. And we link the end as well. Add 500 pixels like before. Although 550 would be correct, probably. Make sure to check out the free project file and the links in the description. At 2 seconds and 20 frames, let's move the shape down and adjust the speed curve. And we need to adjust the set matte effect as we've split the layer. So with a few tricks, it became pretty easy to animate the scene. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and hit the bell, cause you don't want to miss my next video. Thanks for watching this one, see you in the next one. Bye guys!